was talking about adding a node to our list because right now our list is just kind of a figment of our imagination. We have some object called a list that doesn't really point to anything or do anything or know anything, right? So when you're adding to a list, there are three possibilities. You can add a node at the beginning of the list, which is called the head. You can add a node at the end of the list or the tail of the list, or you could add a node somewhere in the middle. All right, so let's talk about adding to the head. So first of all, first thing you wanna do is you wanna create the new node by instantiating the node class as an object. All right, once you've done that, there's going to be two cases here. Either the list is empty or the list is not empty. So if the list is empty, we're gonna check this um, by you know, asking if the head or tail is null. Because remember in our uh, list unparameterized constructor, um, when we make the list for the first time, it's empty, right? We haven't added anything. And the head and the tail are both null. So we can check if one, of the, one or two of those are null and that's how we're gonna know if the list is empty. So if this is the case, we need to assign both head and tail to the new node. Since if we only have one node in our list, that is simultaneously going to be both the head and the tail of the list. All right, so case two is if the list is not empty. So we're gonna take our new node and we are going to make the new node point to the current head node. All right, but if the current head node has something else pointing to it, like another node pointing to it, it's no longer the head, is it? So then we are going to take that head reference and make it point or refer to the new node, which now becomes the head of the list. So, and that's what we wanted to do because we're trying to add a node at the head. All right, and then as always, when you add a node to a list in any way, you're going to increase the count by one. So let's take a look at what that looks like in code. As you can see, we have our method called add to head and all, all of these adding and uh, we're gonna get onto some deleting. These should all be methods within your linked list class. So we're making our new node. I'm just, I've just called it new node, um, makes sense. Um, and we're, it's, we're getting in a parameter called new name. So we're going to start that node with whatever parameter we are passed in to the add to head method. So case one, we say if head is equal to null, head equals new node, tail equals new node, and then we increase the count, okay? But case two, if the list has one or more elements, uh, we can't just do this. So this is the else, you know, else if head is not equal to null, um, the new node dot next, and remember your dot notation to access the methods of a class or fr from an object, our object called new node, accessing its methods, we're gonna use that dot notation or accessing, I guess in this case, it's, it's, da it's data, it's information. So new node dot next, is equal to head, right? Because if we're adding that head, we want it to point to the, what the current head is. And then we're gonna reset head equal to new node. And then we're going to increase our count. All right, so we have successfully added a node to the head of the list. So let's do some practice. What would happen if we changed the original code on the left to the code on the right? So the difference here is that on the left, um, this is the example for case two. We say that new node.next equals to head, and then head is equal to new node. On the right, we're basically flipping the first and second lines within the else clause and saying head is equal to new node 
and then new node.next is equal to head. What would be the difference if there is any? And I'll give you a minute to think about this, and then I will go over the answer. Hopefully you've had a second to think about this. Again, if you're watching this recorded, you can go ahead and hit pause if you want more time to think about it, but I'm going to keep moving here. All right, so you've noticed, probably, hopefully, that I've put some things in capital letters that is bolded. This is because this is really important. So in this, the example on the right, the chain is broken. And the most important rule in any linked list is to always preserve the integrity of the chain, the chain of nodes in the, that make up the linked list. Because if you break that chain, then basically um, you've severed the linked list and it isn't working as a data structure anymore. And something in there probably doesn't have a reference and it's probably going to be uh, deleted by the garbage collector, and thus whatever it was pointing to, that's going to be deleted, and it's going to be a huge chain reaction, no pun intended, although it makes sense because that's what it is. It's a chain. Um, so this is very bad. We want to avoid this as a priority to literally everything else. So, and this happens because if we move the head to the new node first, then nothing will be referring to the old head node right? Because the head doesn't have anything referring to it. If we all of a sudden switch that head reference to a different node, then that node lost all of its connection to any, any kind of reference. So it's kind of cast off into the oblivion of computer memory, and it's going to be destroyed by the, um, by the Java's garbage collector. And since it used to be the head node, that's not good because then the rest of the linked list is going to disappear as well. So um, we always, uh, and also after that happened, uh, saying new node.next equals head would make the new node uh, point to itself because we previously set the head equal to the new node. So now new node and head basically mean the exact same thing. Um, and that's kind of pointless to have just one node looping to itself while we destroy the rest of the linked list. Not at all what we want to happen. So always do what we do on the left. Make sure that everything always has some reference to it. Never leave anything dangling out in, out in the open. Um, make the new node point to the current head node so that it has a reference, so that you can move the head reference away from the previous head into the new head. 